Now that we've discussed how to numerically differentiate data, we'll discuss how to numerically integrate data. These techniques answer the question, what is the integral of either a data set, x, y, or an analytical function, f of x, over the range of x from a to b? In this video, we'll discuss the Newton-Coates formulas for, that work for integrating analytical functions or for integrating x, y data. The trapezoidal rule and Simpson's rules are closed forms, and the rectangular rule is an open form. In the subsequent video, we'll also discuss numerical integration of analytical functions using another version of Richardson's extrapolation called Romberg integration, and a technique called Gaussian quadrature. The rectangle rule is the first and simplest of the Newton-Coates formulas. The rectangle rule estimates the integral from an area of a rectangle, which is essentially a zero degree polynomial. The height of the rectangle is determined by the value of f at some point in the domain, either the left-hand side using f at a, the right-hand side using f at b, or the midpoint of the domain using the point that's halfway between a and b. The midpoint requires that we either know the value of f at the midpoint or that f of x be analytic so that we can evaluate it at the halfway point between a and b. As you can see here, the rectangle rule can have substantial error. The regions between the rectangle and the blue curve are not captured, and the regions of the rectangle that lie outside or above the blue curve are overestimates of the area. The precision of the rectangle rule, and in fact any of the Newton-Coates formulas, can be improved by using a composite form. The composite form decomposes the interval x from a to b into n subintervals, and then either uses the left endpoint, the right endpoint, of the or the midpoint of each subinterval to estimate the integral of each subinterval, and then sums the estimates from each of those subintervals. Here, just a few representative intervals are represented by their rectangles, but the entire domain would be subdivided into similar rectangles. The trapezoidal rule integrates by, instead of using a zero-order polynomial, by using a first-order polynomial, or a straight line, between the endpoints of the domain, and calculating the area of the corresponding trapezoid. Similar to the rectangle rule, the trapezoid rule can also be improved by subdividing the domain into n subintervals and then summing the areas of those n representative trapezoids. Here, again, just a small number of the trapezoids are shown. Trapezoids representing the entire domain would be used to calculate the integral. The Newton-Coates formulas then extend this method to higher order polynomials. We've already looked at the rectangle rule, which requires just one data point, and the trapezoid rule, which requires two data points for the two ends of the trapezoid. Simpson's one-third rule estimates an integral from the area of a second-degree polynomial formed from three data points. That polynomial might be formulated from the Lagrange interpolating polynomial or the Newton interpolating polynomial. Because the integral of a polynomial is easy to compute, the polynomial approximation is the general method for all of the Newton-Coates formulas. Simpson's one-third rule can also be implemented in a composite form. In this case, the interval from A to B must be divided into an even number of subintervals to ensure that the domain can div be divided into n subintervals, each containing three points. Those three points are then used to calculate the second order polynomial representing that interval in the domain. The intervals do not have to be evenly spaced, but when they are evenly spaced, the integral approximation has an easy to define formula, where h is the width of each subinterval. The values of f at the even numbered points are counted twice as many times as the values of f at the odd numbered points, because the odd numbered points end up in the centers of the subintervals, and the even numbered points contribute each contribute to the subinterval to their left and the subinterval to their right. The endpoints of the domain, f at x1 and f at x n plus 1, each only contribute once in the composite one-third rule. The composite one-third rule takes its name from the prefactor h over 3 in this summation. The next higher order polynomial would be a cubic polynomial over an interval containing four points. 
Again, this can be found using a Lagrange interpolating or a Newton interpolating polynomial for data. Then, just as we did for the one-third rule and for the trapezoid rule and for the rectangle rule, we integrate the polynomial over the domain. The Simpson's 3 8 rule takes its name from the 3h by 8, that's the prefactor multiplying the summation. As with the other Newton-Coates formulas, Simpson's 3 8 rule can be formulated as a composite rule as well. To accomplish this, the interval a to b must be divided into n subintervals, where n is a whole number multiple of 3. For equally spaced subintervals, the Simpson's 3 8 composite estimate includes the first and last data points, and 3 multiplied by every third data point starting with the second data point and the third data point, plus 2 times every third data point beginning with the fourth data point. This is, again, because the second and third data points are on the interior of a subinterval, and the fourth and seventh data point are on the boundaries between subintervals. The Newton-Coates formulas can also be written for non-equally spaced data, but the formulas get more complicated because we cannot factor out the width of the data points, because we cannot factor out the width of each subinterval h.